Our tagline is always positive energy, and it's our logo is an ape. We mean it. And when you come into the gym, this is the safe space. This is where we bring positivity and we uplift one another. No matter what's going on in the world, when we come in here, we need to always be trying to support each other and uplift each other and love on each other. Hello, and welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Dr. Julie Fouché, family physician and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring you information and inspiration to help bridge the gap between fitness and medicine and support your journey toward your healthiest self. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. All right, welcome to Pursuing Health. I am super excited to be here today with Elijah Muhammad, also known as EZ, uh, within the CrossFit community. He is the owner of Unorthodox Fitness, former collegiate basketball player at Tennessee Tech, two times CrossFit Games athlete, co founder of Project Onyx, owner of the Lift Heavy Often as an Everyday Seminars, which is uh, something I'm excited to talk about. Also, a father, a husband, a great advocate, and an example of someone who I think is really using their platform to do a lot of good in the world. So, thank you so much for joining me today, Easy. Thank you for that intro and thank you for having me. <laughs> awesome. Well, we just saw each other, uh, I guess it was, what, two weeks ago now in Madison for the 2022 CrossFit Games. And I always think it's interesting, you know, the experience of the CrossFit Games changes for me every year. And I know it's been a few years since you've been there also competing, but um, it seems like you were pretty busy. You were up to a lot this year. So what was your games experience like this year? Uh, it was phenomenal. It was an enjoyable as always. Um, I did have a lot going on uh, with the nonprofit. Did a couple community workouts, but um, community workouts, snatch clinics. Um, did a DI board uh, discussion with O2, and just some other cool stuff that I did with Yeti and some other companies. So had about three events each day for the first three That's days busy. Um, of the the games, but um. It's just always good because you just meet so many new people. Mm -hmm. um, and then so many people that are passionate about certain things or just want to learn more about what you're doing. You get to learn about them and meet um, just a variety of people at the game. So it's always a really good experience. Um, and this year I had a booth, so it was even a, a, a better experience because I got to experience that side of mm -hmm. the game. That's awesome. Super cool. Do you follow, I'm curious, how much do you follow the competition nowadays? Or are you just there, you know, meeting people and interacting with the community as your priority? Yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, I've always been a fan. So I've always um, invested time into following athletes and, um, you know, keeping up with like what they're doing, where they're mm -hmm. at. You know, um, especially, I know this sounds weird, but I was especially invested um, in following women once they started having kids. Mm, yeah. That was super interesting because I, when cool. I first got into CrossFit, a lot of women were like, oh, I'm not, I need my body and this, this and that. Yeah. I always had kids and I'm like, hey, yo, listen, like y'all would be dope moms. You know, y'all are dedicated, hard work. Y'all have all these pieces. Like mm -hmm. um, and a lot of women, were they weren't against it, but they were just like, oh, it's not the time. And let then me you wait. Just, let me wait. Yeah. Yeah, you see all these cross the games women having kids, and then you see their comebacks, and you're like, "Yo, like, awesome. that's like you're you're really transforming everything that people thought about what the body shouldn't do or cannot do through mm -hmm. pregnancy, and even you know after after having birth." And so, um, I've been invested in following a lot of athletes that I know that I've you know competed against and stuff like that, and just yeah, keeping up with their journey. That's awesome. It was so awesome to see Carl Webb, especially this year, and. You know, people like Annie, I mean, her story last year was just yeah. unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's incredibly inspiring. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's always interesting for me, too. I think that the experience changes every year and I like to watch the competition. But you realize how much more, you know, when you're an athlete and you're competing, that's all you think about. You're just doing your events and then you're resting. But there's so much more that happens at the games. And like you said, I've just loved you know, this was the first year that I really didn't have much planned. I had like one or two events, but I just loved walking around and running into people that I hadn't seen in a while or having conversations, meeting new people. And it just shows you it's experiencing our community in such a profound way that, you know, to realize how strong the CrossFit community is all around the world and, and just the people that you meet. So. 
for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I love to hear sort of your CrossFit origin story. I know that you were playing basketball at Tennessee Tech and then you got into CrossFit, but how did you hear about it? And what was it that really intrigued you that made you say, this is something I want to do? Yeah, so um started at Tennessee Tech. Uh, so I heard about CrossFit while I was in college. Uh, my strength coach kind of introduced us to it in our strength programs. Mm-hmm. A little bit of like the CrossFit style methodology and things like that. And um, once I graduated from college, I was like, all right, where am I going to go play ball? Like, how am I going to you know, get overseas or, you know, yeah. pursue basketball? My strength coach was like, hey, you know, I think you should do strength conditioning. I think you'll be really good at it. You know, wow. you know I need some help around here and you know, I would love to have you on board. And I was just kind of like, like, I don't know, like, and. Uh, he was like, "Hey, if you become a strength coach, how about you do a, you become a strength coach and compete in CrossFit um, on my team?" And I was just kind of thrown off, like compete in CrossFit. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? I asked, like, you know. And um, after I went to an event, he took me to a. Um, at that time, it was a. It was like a regional or or. It was like a regional or something, yeah. Yeah, and I went, and I was just like, "This is crazy!" Like people <laughs> upside down doing like push ups and. You know what I'm saying? Like doing you know, handstand push-ups and like lifting heavy tires and like all this. I'm like, wow, like, you know, I hadn't seen, I hadn't been exposed to that side of fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got back and um I was like, hey man, like I'll do it. Like I'll I'll be the strength conditioning coach. Like I'll I'll take the job. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll do CrossFit. And so I started doing CrossFit and literally within a few months, Rich Froney became came on staff as a strength coach. Yeah. And um he literally just told me like, Hey, just whatever he does, you do. like, you just train with him. Like yeah. whatever he's going to do, you do. <laughs> he put me in the hands of Froning and, um, you know, I was fresh off of, uh, college sports. So I was mm-hmm. still in that athlete mentality of like, whatever you tell me to do, I'm gonna get the job done. Like I'm yeah. doing, yeah. um, just started training with Froning and constantly like learning and watching and, you know, putting myself through the test and stuff like that, as well as just like, I was a strength coach, so we were like constantly learning about programming and constantly learning about, you know, how to, you know, train football players versus basketball players versus track, um, mm-hmm. like plus like all the different variations of sports. So I was like, there's a lot of information really fast. Um, but that's just how I got into CrossFit. With my strength coach was like, hey man, you should do CrossFit. You'd be good at it. That's awesome. It's such a a leap of faith though to think like your whole life has been basketball, and that's where you were you were focused on of like, okay, what's next for basketball? And then to just say, okay, I'm going to take a gamble on this new thing that I've never done before. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a, I wouldn't say it was scary because the idea was that I was going to pursue strength and conditioning, mm-hmm. um, just compete in CrossFit or just train mm-hmm. CrossFit. And then as I got more and more involved in CrossFit, that's when I was like, all right, I think I'm going to just do CrossFit. Like, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to CrossFit. And at that time there wasn't much money, um, well, there was really no money, but like at the local competitions, you can win money. Mm-hmm. And once I found out, you know, I could win 300 bucks or, you know, 400 bucks at a yeah. local comp, I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to really try to make <laughs> money, you know? That's awesome. Did you like, did you really enjoy strength and conditioning when you played basketball? Was that something that you liked? Um, I list, man, I was tiny. Um, I was like 165 pounds. I was super skinny. I was just really athletic, agile, mm-hmm. fat, whatever you want to call it. But I was small, um, just really tough. Like I just like playing aggressive sports and basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I wasn't. I wasn't really in the weight room. Mm-hmm. I got into it because like there was guys that were. When I got to Tennessee Tech, it happened in junior college. When I got to Tennessee Tech, there were guys that were just as fast and just as agile but bigger like they just mm. had mass and like it was like well crap like i gotta get stronger or else these guys are gonna have the advantage and so mm-hmm. i just um it was like my sophomore year at my junior college i just started diving into lifting weights and then that just carried on into my junior year when i got to tennessee tech nice that's awesome well i know you know i don't think our 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 games career is just barely overlapped. I think we had some regionals together, maybe. Yeah. Um, 
But I'm always curious just about athletes path, because especially coming straight off of basketball, where you're in that competition mode and then going right into competing from CrossFit, you know, there comes a point where it's, it can be hard to make a decision to then have other priorities besides competing or not putting that as your first priority. And so I'm curious for you how that's played out and how you've made that transition over time. Yeah, I would look at it as for me, it wasn't as hard because I've always technically, I've always been married and had a kid. Okay. Started CrossFit. So I've always had to prioritize and juggle what mm-hmm. I wanted to do, like as sport with having at the time a girlfriend and then my senior year in college I had my daughter Mm -hmm. Um, so it's always a balance of like trying to figure out this balance so when I got into CrossFit it was just like we'll just keep figuring out the balance you know sometimes I get more over here and less over here and sometimes I get more over here and less over here but um as I started getting into CrossFit more and more and more it became like do I want to continue to obsess this much with what I'm doing mm-hmm. and, and miss some of the things that I'm really passionate about, which was like raising my kid, like having mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think as I got older, it was just kind of like, maybe I can do it with less and less and less. And I think that was like the game in my mind where it was just like, do I have to train this much to still qualify? Mm-hmm. Or, or can I get close by training? this much or yeah. less and less so that I can spend more time. Um, but I've always been used to balancing them all um, because I've always had them um, during CrossFit. That makes sense. And I can imagine then the more kids you have, the more you know time and attention you want to spend there. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's, I think that's always a tough um, thing because it's so easy. I think for anyone, once you kind of drink the CrossFit Kool-Aid to to want to do it all the time and just be sort of obsessed with training in every detail and then having to step back and ask yourself that question, well, how does this fit into like my other priorities in life? And is CrossFit helping me be a better dad or helping me be be better at work or the other goals I have, or is CrossFit like the priority? And it's, um, everybody's got their own path through that. So. Yeah. And it's, and it demands that like it, it, it honestly demands for you to be into every bit of it and all the details mm-hmm. once you level. It's like, especially, and I always say this to people, like, if you haven't been to the games, you don't know how to get to the games, right? Like, it's just, mm-hmm. if you haven't been somewhere, you don't know how to get there. So your mind is like, I need to do every little thing possible and, yeah. and so I'll figure this out. And then once you figured it out, you're like, oh, okay, I know how to get here. And I'm, I'm now capable. I now know I know how to get here maybe I can, you know, slow things down or, mm-hmm. you know, have an off season. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but a lot of athletes, they don't, they don't know how to get there cause they've never been. So they're like, I can't have an off season. I just got to keep pushing until it happens. Um, and for me, it just got to that point where I was just like, okay, I qualified, you know, I can take some time off. Like I, I know I can get back here. So mm-hmm. let me now balance things a little bit better and not dive so far into the training regimen of CrossFit. Totally. Yeah. It's awesome to see that. What is, what does your approach look like now? What does your tra- training look like? Um, I'm literally, <laughs> I'm literally about to get a coach for the first time. Wow. No way. So yeah, you yeah. never had a coach through all of your years competing at the game. Never, never had a coach. Wow. Um, yeah. I've just always programmed for myself. Uh-huh. Train myself. Um, and my wife was like, do you need a coach? And I was like, you think so? I mean, I, I got there twice and I've been close multiple times without one. Yeah. It was just like, you're just racking your brain now. Like you're just, mm-hmm. how much can I do? What should I do? When should I do it? If you have a coach, you just know to get in. This mm-hmm. is what I got to get done. And you can move on without racking your brain of should I do more? Can I do more? Or should I add more? Or whatever it may be. And I was like, yeah. So I took her word and I was like, I'll reach out to a couple of people and, um, you know, I'll see if I can find a coach that can help me get back to the CrossFit Games. Wow, that's awesome. And so true that there's so much, I mean, there's stress just by having an endeavor like that of trying to qualify for an event like the CrossFit Games. But then there's also the stress of like that added stress that you said of questioning whether I'm doing the right things or doing enough or too much. And 
being able to offload that onto someone else, onto a coach, and then you just being able to be the athlete and just say, yep, I'll do whatever's on my list for today and I'll do it, you know, as well as I can do it and then have some piece in that is, is hope, I think that's going to be great for you. For sure. For sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, there's a couple of people that I've been kind of close to that I've talked to that are coaches that I've learned a lot from mm-hmm. um, on my journey as an athlete. And so I'm just excited to see like, if they do decide to take me on as an athlete, hopefully they, they're not too busy, but um, to see like how they can help me and benefit me, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the mental and physical side of things. That's awesome. Wow. So cool. And I know you've tried some other um, big athletic endeavors over the years too. You've done some marathons and some other events. What, what was the reasoning behind that? And what did you learn from those things? Yeah. So I did two half marathons, two marathons. Um, I did the half marathon because it was one of my members was on their bucket list to do a half marathon Mm, and she didn't have anyone to train with or anyone to do it with. So I said, Hey, I'll do it with you. Um, just as a coach supporting one of his athletes. Um, Uh and, and, um, she was just like, I'm not trying to do this for time. It's just on my bucket list. I just want to get it done. And so I was like, all right, cool. And, um, I went out, I didn't train for it. I just went out and it was like, Hey, it's 13 miles. Okay. Let's just see if my body can hold up and decently fit. And I ran about six miles with her and she was just like, I want you to just see what you can do. Just you go. <laughs> and I was, oh, I was running with you. She was like, I want, I want you to go, you go. And I ended up running it. And I think I held like a, a seven forty eight mile wow. uh, for the remainder. And, um, it, it, that, that intrigued me when I looked at when yeah. I thought of the pace and I was like, man, I wonder if I can do that the entire thing. So it's yeah. like, okay, I have to kind of prep myself and train and then run a half marathon. And so, um, I prepped myself and train and did the half marathon, um, to see if I can better my time and see if I can hold a certain pace, um, which I was able to do. And then another one of my members was like, Hey man, he just, he just does random challenges throughout his career. But what he does is he writes these challenges down to basically get his body to, or his mind to like, prep for something mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's something at the like an end goal and so he says in six months i'm going to run a marathon that gives me six months to train and now mm-hmm. he has a regimen or he says um I, th- I don't know if you heard about it but it was like um people were doing like the i think it was like the 24 hour or not 24 hours like the one hour burpee challenge and you get his book of world records or something crazy. okay yeah it's always prepared himself for that and like he just finds these challenges and does them like ruck challenges and so uh-huh. and i'm gonna run a marathon you should do it with me and i was just like no problem and so All literally right. up, no training ran a marathon <laughs> and the only reason i do it that way is so that when i go into training or preparing for the next time it's like can i pr or can i do better if i train for mm-hmm. um, but also is my body generally fit enough to get me 26.2 miles can mm-hmm. it actually get me through that and so um I trained for it, ran it the first time, it, it sucked, trained for it the second time, did it, beat my time. Um, and I was just like, I'll never do that again. I don't know, like, <laughs> I'll say the marathon is, it is the hardest thing I've ever experienced. Wow. It is the hardest. I have, the games is, a, is five days long and you just get, you get away from things. You, your mind gets to change pace and mm-hmm. shift and you got highlights. Once you hit a dark space in, in that marathon, it, it's it's just dark. Like, mm-hmm. is there, there's no coming out of it. It's just, can I just sit here long enough to get this done? Because I'm in pain. Like, I'm mm-hmm. just in pain. And so it was a really, really tough mental challenge for me. But got it done, had fun. And um, those are just kind of the reasons why I ran them. Wow. That's crazy. I, so I have zero desire to ever run a marathon. I've run a half once in training and um I thought like no way there's no way I want to run a marathon but <laughs> if I recall correctly didn't Henshaw have a story about you in running um I'm sure he tells a lot of stories but okay. yeah I I think there were some things about my the way that my pacing was and my running yeah. that were just um a little bit odd <laughs> yeah. but yeah no I even though I always did better in the endurance events in CrossFit, there is nothing about me that ever wants to run a marathon. So I have a lot of respect for you doing that, especially doing it without training. Um, 
and knowing like, and, and pushing through and finishing because, you know, it sounds like it can get, you can get to a really bad place there, especially if you're, um, you know, you're not like, don't have experience doing it or how to pace it or things like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'd love to hear also how you then decided to open Orthodox Fitness. Was that something that, you know, you thought you'd always do, or there was a natural transition between, um, being a strength coach and going into owning the gym? No, I didn't want to open a gym. Um, (laughs) I'm, uh, I was, I won't say I was burned out. But I was just kind of like, I want to try to, it was around 20, it was the end of 2017. I was coming off the games after competing in 2017 and, um, mm-hmm. just had a couple bad experiences. Um, and was like, man, I just, I don't want to run a gym. I just want to train and try to qualify in 2018. And mm-hmm. we made the move to Iowa to be close to family. And, um, my wife was like, you need to open it. We need to open a gym. And I was like, I, I just don't really want to right now. I, don't, I, I just want to chill. Like, it's not like we need to open a gym. Like, we don't need the money right now, and we're fine. You know, mm-hmm. just let me. Train. And literally, like, she just took me in. And was like, "Hey, this is the building," and I'm like, the "Building." What? She's like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna open a gym." And I'm like, Are you "I just told you." She was like, "Yes, yeah, the building." And then um, she's like, yeah, the equipment comes in like three weeks. And <laughs> So your wife what? opened a gym. You didn't really open a gym. Uh, why? <laughs> why? Well, she strategically, she was correct in the things that she was looking at and why she was doing it. Mm-hmm. But I was just I was just coming off of uh, the 2017 games, you know, um, a bad gym experience. Um, yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't even want any want part of this. Yeah. yeah. Once she got it. Once the equipment started coming in, the excitement just came because it's like, oh, shoot, like my equipment, my, yeah. you know, my space, this is it. So um, once once she got it rolling, I was I was all in. And, um, you know, we got an orthodox now. It's been four years. Um, we're loving it. Members love it. It's doing great. Um, and we're just enjoying serving the community through fitness. That's awesome. I can imagine in Iowa, there's not a ton of CrossFit gyms. So how has it been? Like, how, what was it like rolling that out into the community and what has the response been like? It's been good. I mean, there were, when we first opened, there was probably like 10 gyms, mm-hmm. maybe. I think now there's like 24, 20, like in the, mm-hmm. in the maybe a 50 mile radius. Um, so, I mean, it's grown a lot, but the community has engaged in it. They've loved it. Um, a lot of them don't really know who I am. Um, as far as like the CrossFitter, yeah. even, um, even when they come in, like they, I've had members that have been doing CrossFit for like a few months. And then I guess someone told them where they Googled me or whatever. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Like, I didn't know you. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't really announce it. You know, like yeah. I got a floor mat in here. So like, if you pay attention, you can see certain symbols that I've competed at the, that level. But, um, you know, I just want you to trust me as a coach, as a good person to, you know, help you get fit and achieve your goals and keep you healthy. Um, you know, that doesn't really matter to me when it comes to, you know, interacting with my peers and just people that are just in the community looking to get healthy and get fitter and get stronger. So um, the community has been super cool. They've engaged it. Um, a lot of other gyms have been super cool and stuff like that. So we've enjoyed it here. That's awesome. What has been your favorite part about owning your gym now that you're you even though you were reluctant to to open it to begin with um just the camaraderie just the mm-hmm. the it's the bonds the um the interactions and like the light bulb moments where people are like oh like that's it oh i got it it's like just having that over and over again and i tell people all the time uh for us at an orthodox like we coach like we teach we mm-hmm. invest in like helping you achieve and learn new skills and things like that so it's not just like oh we gotta come in and work out and then you know like you know your hours over yeah, yeah. Next over it's like no let's talk about mobility let's talk about injury prevention let's talk about you know you got an ankle issue these are the things you can do this is what you do at home let's talk about how we're going to scale this workout how we're going to modify due to anything that's happening or what's going on in our bodies and you know let's talk about pacing the workout and how do we strategically attack it the proper way and like we get into a lot of coaching. So you get a lot of the light bulb moments going on, like, oh my goodness, like, 
okay, that's what you meant, or this is how to do that, or I finally got my double under, or whatever it may be. So um, it's just exciting, like, where you're constantly getting that kind of, that, I don't know, it's like a endorphin release mm-hmm. of people being excited about their fitness and learning more. Getting better, making progress. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I could feel it when we were at the games and I got to sit in on a workout that you did with some of the kids you brought along with you at the CrossFit affiliate they had set up there on site. And I mean, the energy was just unbelievable. Like you guys had the music going. These kids were cheering so loud for each other every time they did a squat. And it was like, man, I wish I had that every time I was working out in the garage and had this like, you know, full cheer squad, um, encouraging me every step of the way. And you said, this is just how it is. This is like, when we train, this is just how we do it. And it was super inspiring. Yeah. So our tagline is always positive energy and it's our logo is an ape. Um, Mm -hmm. and we, we mean it like, it's like, Hey, when you come into the gym, this is the safe space. This is where we bring positivity and we uplift one another, no matter what's going on in the world. When we come in here, we need to always be trying to support each other and uplift each other and love on each other, whatever that looks like. And so, um, yeah, when we get to like big lifting sessions, like no matter if you're lifting 20 pounds or the barbell, it's like, yo, mm-hmm. good job, good movement, like uh, keep it up, like let's keep going. Um, and because I'm the one that sets the tone as the owner, it just becomes infectious. So once mm-hmm. the higher up sets the tone of this is how the facility is going to be ran. This is the energy that we're going to bring. This is how we're going to do it. It just trickles down and Mm -hmm. then take to that. And then they start spreading it. So everyone, they come in, they start getting that kind of feeling and that excitement. And then they're like, yo, this is the norm. Okay. Like I, I like this. I mean, next thing you know, you got like 10 kids in the gym, just clapping for each other, high five and chest bumps, hugs and PR flying all over the room. And, just people having fun. And so, um, yeah, that was just a, a, a dose of like, this is what we do on a regular basis. Like our session, just exciting and thrilling. Um, and so uh, we were all at the games and I was like, man, like everyone's tired and people are a little frustrated about this and that. And I'm like, you know what, let's just do how we do at home. Let's mm-hmm. go lift. Yeah, let's go have a lifting session and let's just have some fun and then we'll get back to the day. And so, um, that was yeah. me just like, Want to do what we normally do at home to put everybody in that kind of mental state of like, all right, we have fun, we enjoy ourselves, we lift it, and now we can get on with our day. I love that, just that kind of reset and state change, and it was cool. Um, and and there's so much. I'm thinking back of another guest I've had on the podcast, BJ Fogg, who researches behavior change and habits, and he has a whole, you know, a whole line of his research about emotion and how when we create new habits, it's not so much that we repeat them so many times that makes them a new habit. It's the emotion that we attach to them. So even if it's like, I just lifted the barbell and then I'm going to cheer really loud and high five and chest bump that creates that like positive habit loop and all of those positive hormones. And like you said, endorphins that, um, just reinforce those things. So it's something he even writes in the book, you know, do it for even silly things in your head. Like, I've done it before. If I've been having a really bad day, just like, congrats, Julie, like, good job. You just made breakfast or like, you just <laughs> brush your teeth, like great work. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but cool. it, it totally changes your state and makes you smile. And, um, and it's good for, it's good for your health. So that's awesome. That's it was cool. super cool too, to see your, um, I'm blinking on her name now, but your 16 year old girl that you're training, um, she just Blair. crushed a PR on her back squat and, I mean, I've never lifted that much weight in my life, let alone at age 16. So it was super cool to see. Yeah. Her name is Blair. She wants to compete at the games too. And so um, she, I've been training her for mm, going on, maybe going on a year, maybe like 10 months now. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, she's actually not here. She's in Oklahoma. So she's not in Iowa with us. But okay. any chance to you know get her here, we try to get her here to hang out and spend time and um I always tell her like when she comes I'm like you normally don't get to do the project honors classes because it's like a training camp or, mm-hmm. or a seminar she's coming here so that we can fly somewhere else um and so that was like her I think her second 
experience around the kids. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she got home, she messaged me and was like, I should have never left. Can I just, (laughs) and I'm like, I was like, I wish if I could move you here, trust me, I would move you here. So uh, she was just super excited because she's just like, I train alone. I work out alone. I don't get that type of energy. And Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, man, if we can, the more we can get you here, the better because the the kids are just going to, they're going to keep your spirits where they need to be for you to train at any capacity you want to mm-hmm. because you're just happy and you feel good. Totally. Well, yeah, I have no doubt she'll be at the games one day. And um, it was just, it was really cool. And it was really cool to see all the guys. Like she was the only girl and all the guys were just cheering so loud for her and so excited. And she was doing the same for them. It was just really neat. Um, but I think also, like you said, a testament to to our environment and like, for a lot of people, the difference I noticed even going through the pandemic of training in the garage more, training by yourself versus being in the affiliate, being around people and positive energy, it just makes such a difference, whether it's in the gym or any anything else in life, like being in a in a positive environment and around a community, it's really contagious and it makes a big difference. Without a doubt, man. It's the um like I attest not only qualifying for the games but like i came in under froning Mm -hmm. and that environment was like i mean it was aggressive and when i say aggressive i mean like there was just some really good athletes Mm -hmm. like the competition level was like always as everyone was always putting forth their best effort but the the best part about it is that we were always playing Mm -hmm. we were supporting one another and we were always like leaning for each other when things went bad. We always had someone to go to. And so I just attest to that environment of like, it was the perfect scenario. I got high caliber athletes that everyone was better than me. I had people that I can lean on in any situation that I was going through. Um, Cause I was probably one of the only people with a kid and I was the young, like one of the youngest. Mm-hmm. And then it was just like, I have to level up my, my competition every single training session. Um, and so that same thing is in, in project onyx. And when the kids left, because they're like, everyone's strong and everyone's on programs and getting stronger or mm-hmm. you know, weightlifting and doing CrossFit. And so it's just like that same environment, but with the youth. And so now it's like, and y'all are like 15, 16, 17 years old. Like, I'm excited to see what happens when y'all like, like 20, when y'all are adults, like young adults developing. Totally. Um, but they're just so positive and they just, if anything goes wrong, they know they got each other to support and lean on in those moments. Um, so it just puts you in a space where, I mean, your environment is everything. I tell people all the time, like, go to work every day in a toxic environment. Like, see how you just function yeah. after, even when you remove yourself from the environment. Just see how much it drains you. You know, like, same thing with, like, relationships. Like, like see how you function under toxic, like, mm-hmm. a toxic environment regularly. Like, you may not notice it. Once you get out of it and you're away from it and you have something to thrive for and people around you that are motivating you, pushing you, like you're going to see yourself blossom way faster. You're going to see things happening that you you have no idea why they're happening. Like you can't attest to it, right? It's just like, Mm -hmm. why is everything happening so good? It's like you finally got rid of the things that you thought were normal or that you were fighting through. And it's like, now you're ready to roll. So that environment with the kids is like, I have to make sure I create the right environment where everyone feels welcome. Everyone feels special and no one feels left out in no, in no manner. Everyone encouraged, everyone gets high fives. Everyone gets a pat on the back. Everyone is feeling the encouragement so that they can thrive to their best ability in that environment. Um, And that's just the idea with like anything. It's the same thing as parenting. It's the same thing as being a husband. It's the same thing as anywhere. It's like, how do I get this person to thrive? Mm-hmm. Well, I got to set the tone and make the environment a place where I know they can thrive in. I love that. How did you, so this is something that not, most people don't probably pay as much attention to or pick up on. I think most people just kind of morph into their environment and, and tend to think there's not a lot they can do to change it. And it, as you were talking, it almost reminded me of when you have somebody who's eating a really kind of lousy diet, eating fast food and sugar all the time they probably don't feel like they feel bad, but then once they change their diet and start eating healthier, they're like, wow, I didn't know I could feel this great. And same yeah. thing probably goes for your environment. We can get used to, or like even how yeah, we can get used to 
these environments and just think there's normal. Um, you don't know how great you can feel and the things that can happen in your life. Like you said, if you get yourself out of some of those toxic environments and relationships. So is that something that was just instilled from you early on? Or how did you come to understand that that was really important? I mean, I grew up in, I mean, I grew up in the hood. Like I grew up in a tough area. That area was very, very toxic. So I think what I can attest to, um, my faith never wavered. I always knew like God has me here for a reason. Like there's mm -hmm. something like whatever I go through is for a reason. I have mm -hmm. to go through this. I have to push through it. But I realize the power of having the right people around you. Um, and that was huge when I was just like, hey, I'm okay losing friends. I am completely fine with you walking away mm -hmm. or telling you got something else or being mad at me and utilizing that to be like, oh, well, I don't really talk. Like, that's fine. Because my wife has showed me something that I've never been able to see. And that is like what someone that is truly, genuinely positive, loving, and wants to see you win, what that feels like, what that looks like. And then what you're able to do when you understand that. Mm -hmm. So um, it took me a long time. I mean, like a long time because like, Growing up, it's like, them is your homies. Like, you ride and die for your boys. Like, whatever mm -hmm. happens, loyalty is everything. And I started thinking, like, we all can define certain things based off of who we are. Like, loyalty to you may look different than loyalty to me. Um, and so I just started looking at things where I was just like, I have my own family now. I have my wife. I have my kids. I have my God. I don't need anything else. So anything that wants to walk away from me, like, okay, it may hurt in the moment, but I'll be okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, if it come to me, if it doesn't serve me and make me genuinely happy, it's like, I don't, I don't need you. Like, I don't need you. Um, and so I think I've just gotten content with the basics of like, I'm starting to understand and see like, what toxicity looks like for me and it looks different for everyone but what it looks like for me so i've i've been able to just be like no i know how to set an environment where everyone can thrive and i have this gift um of just knowing how to relate to people and mm -hmm. genuinely stepping in their shoes to be like hey i'll go through this with you cool like and i'll make sure we come out on the other end but like, you got to have a personal, you got to have a, a positive mindset about what's happening. Like you can't, you cannot just keep rolling with the negativity. You cannot just keep rolling with things that are holding you back. Um, and if you do, I will not drag you out. I will, I will leave you too, because mm -hmm. I can't that slow me down. And so it's just a, a, a visual. Like my wife has given me so many visuals and so many outside perspectives that I don't think I would have got because I don't. Maybe because I don't, I don't listen to people like that. I didn't listen to, like, my heart is just so. This, is, I think it's a, a lesson that I've been learning, especially over the last couple of years, is just how important it is to know yourself, be yourself, and be confident, you know, and, and know God and know that God's with you and be confident in that and that you want to love and be there for everybody else, but you also can only do what you can do and you can't save everyone if they're going to if they're going to be a toxic influence on your life. I think that's a really hard thing for people to learn and to do. And often we hang on to um, those toxic environments or relationships when they're then having a negative impact on us. And then we can't actually share our gifts with the world because we're being dragged down by that. Yeah. I think, I think we're just, we're used. It becomes, we think it's safe because it's comfortable. Because it's because it's habit, because it's convenient, because it's there and it's been there. And so I've just gotten to a point where I'm like, yo, if you want to go, go. If you don't want to talk to me, okay. If you don't call me and you forget about me, I'm fine. Because I now know what I need to do to serve. Mm -hmm. I now know who I need to serve. And that's my four children and my wife as much as possible. And I mean, for all of us, man, it takes a lot of soul searching, figuring things out. Um, and just, I mean, it's scary. Like when mm -hmm. you start going through it, it's scary. And like, 
I think that has been a big thing where it was just like, I'm not scared anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not. Like, it's like, no, I have to create this environment and I have to keep myself in a positive mind state. And every year I've qualified for the games, I've had a good environment of training. Mm -hmm. In two years, I've had a, a very, very good environment of training. So it's yeah. just trying to put all those pieces together. And um, as we do with everything else, figure things out as we go. Mm -hmm. So cool. And so cool that your wife has helped you sort of learn that, that um, lesson like, too. I'm like my therapist. It sucks. <laughs> like, it sucks, but I'm learning. I mean, of course I'm still, I'm still learning to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it sucks because it's your wife and you know what I'm saying? You always feel like, I mean, like I always feel like she's poking at me. Like she's like, she's like, I don't know. It's like when I hear it from someone else, it's like, you know, I had, literally I had to get rid of my therapist because I was like, <laughs> you sound just like my wife. Like, <laughs> like, why am I paying for this? <laughs> yeah. Why am I paying for this? It was literally that. And it was like scary because the therapist that they assigned me to ran track in high school, like my wife, similar <laughs> build, like my wife. Yeah. Um, she has four kids. Her <laughs> husband used to play basketball like me. Oh, gosh. And as soon as she started talking, we started diving into a conversation. I had her for about like maybe four months. Uh -huh. I was just like, hey, listen, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But like, I don't think we need to go any further. <laughs> like, Why do you say that? And I was like, because you just sound like everything about you is just like my wife. I feel like I'm talking to my wife. But just hearing it from you doesn't frustrate me. Hearing it from my wife, I feel like mm. I sometimes get frustrated. But now it, it, you just gave me clarity of like, she's not poking. She's just speaking from what she sees and what she hears and yeah. listening to me. And I was just like, yeah. And literally she was just like, this has been the best session that I've ever had. And I'm glad you said that because there's so many people that can't separate the two. They, mm -hmm. they don't ever find the separation of like, um, or not the separation or like see them in the same. Like, it's like my husband's saying this and mm -hmm. he's talking bad about me or he's downing me or he's being negative. And they never sit back and say, why do I feel this way when this person says it to me? Like, what, yeah. why does it make me feel this way? And I think I just had that look in myself. I was just like, yeah, like my wife is saying, she told me, she says exactly what you're saying. <laughs> she should start charging for it. Maybe she could be a therapist. Know, <laughs> well, That's awesome. Been, it's been cool to have that behind closed doors. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. a woman that that's that, she's that sound. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And just kind of help guide me as a young man and stuff like that. Absolutely. Well, and cool. Probably such a gift that the therapist ended up having so many things in common with your wife to allow you to see that. Because if it had been someone different, you might not have actually seen I, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it still took me like four and a half, five months to <laughs> see it. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I know you are an awesome dad and your kids are a huge priority for you, but I also just see, I mean, even being around you a little bit at the games with the kids that you're training there, it's clear that you have a gift for just mentorship and like children, youth. Is that something that you've always really been involved in or felt was important or how did you come into that role? Yeah. So, um, I've always been passionate about it. Like, I remember in high school, like, saying, like, oh, man, I can't wait to have kids. Like, and if I had oh, kids wow. now, yeah. we would be fine. Like, if yeah. me and my high school girlfriend was like, if, I, if we have kids now, like, it's cool. Like, trust me, like, we'll be okay. Like, like I'm, I'm going to knock this dad thing out the park. Like, don't. <laughs> but to go further, even talking about serving other kids, um, I knew I always wanted to. I just didn't know when the time was. I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, I was like, man, I got nieces and nephews that grow up where I grew up and that need my assistance and help. And I felt like I just wanted to move them with me. I, I just needed them under my roof. Mm -hmm. And I thought in my mind that was the way I can serve them by getting them under me and them being my children. Mm -hmm. um, and when it didn't work out that way and things didn't line up that way and you know, other things was happening. It was just like, man, I'm not giving any of my resources to any other kid. Like, I need to get focus on I need that. To make sure, yeah, I need to make sure my nieces and nephews are okay. Specifically, mm -hmm. my nephews, because I'm a male and I know mm -hmm. what it's like growing up in that environment as a young mm -hmm. male. 
And so um, I want to say it was, I had, I had probably turned down over five mission trips in the time of my CrossFit career. And um, I just, my mind was just like, what, like, why are we going to, to Africa mm-hmm. to help some kids? It's like kids in the city. It's kids up the street. It's, I got nieces and nephews in Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I got, like, it's people right here. Like, we don't need to go anywhere. We could just do it here. And so yeah. I never, I was just kind of like in this mode of like, what are we doing? And it wasn't until like, maybe like two years ago when a nonprofit kicked off to the, when the murder of George Floyd happened, where I was mm-hmm. just like, I already had had four kids under me. And I was just like, giving them all of me. What do you need? You know, how do we do this? Do you want to start a business? How do we create this? Like, um, and so I've always had this mentorship because kids have always kind of leaned to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been very, very verbal and I've always just been like a go-getter. I've never been shy to just, mm-hmm. you know, like meet people, talk to people, hang out with people and just off rip. Like, yeah. Hey, meet you, Julie. Like, um, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you? And just start <laughs> yeah. conversation, right. Where it's just yeah. like, Let's just get it out the way. Like, let's just get the tough things out the way. And so yeah. I've always had that about me. And so when it came to kids, it was just like, I want to find a way to unlock kids' true potential, mm-hmm. whatever it is. It's just like, how do we unlock this in, in every child? How do we mm-hmm. figure out what you are genuinely in love with and good at that you can pursue and do? And, you know, find a way to monetize it in mm-hmm. the day. And so... Um, I think I was just passionate about helping young black youth, but it goes back to my childhood. My mother ran a lot of nonprofits. Um, we were raised in a church. She mm-hmm. was over the children's program and things like that. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, at six o'clock. I'm on a call. Don't just hang tight. Um, and I was just super passionate because my mother always took in kids. She always helped raise kids, groom kids, teach kids uplift them, had programs and things for them. So I was always around my mom who was always serving and giving to other people. Like I remember going to the corner store when I was a kid and my mom would be like, here's $5 for you. Here's $5 for you. Here's $5 for you. And I was like, you know, you could have just gave me 25. Like I could have had $25. Right? You know what, like, what about me? Yeah, like, you, yeah. just, you gave me what you gave everyone else, but you could have just gave it all to me and <laughs> <laughs> like maybe buy them something or whatever. But that's just how her mind was, where she was just like, I'm, I'm going to serve and give to yeah. everyone. And so I think all of those things were instilled in me. And it wasn't until I got older and got away from the stubborn mindset of like, there are kids that need the support. There are kids that need guidance and help. Um, so I was just always gifted with that, like, kind of personality to just be direct up front, talk to people, make friends. Um, and like, I've always just wanted to serve, which is the reason why I've, I've always wanted to have kids. Cause I was like, if I have my own kids, I know I get to serve. Mm-hmm. It's, it's everlasting. I, I, you're mine forever. And I will always be here to serve you and give to you and make sure you're okay. And so I just totally. think that was a part of who I am. Totally. And I can tell even just from this conversation, a couple of things you mentioned about your, one of your members decided to run a half marathon and you're like, yeah, sure. I'll do that with you. Or before we, before we press record, you told me how you had driven someone to go get their haircut because they needed a ride. And it just, yeah. it's clear that you have that big heart and are just up for helping anyone in any way that they need it, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, so what has been, as you've been working more with the kids, or maybe you can just share a little bit about what project Onyx is and what you do. And then what is the, what is the biggest thing that you've learned by working with these teens in terms of what what it is that they need that helps them then unlock that potential? Yeah, so to start off, Project Onyx is my nonprofit. We run out of my gym, Unorthodox Fitness. Um, it is to serve young, underserved communities, young Black youth, um, teach them about health and wellness, fitness, give them a safe space to vent. Um, we feed them three times a week. We work out and train. Um, and we just spend time investing in them. That's it. It's just like, hey, you need someone, a shoulder to cry on, we're here. You need people to support you, we're here. And just giving them an environment, a space that is directly for them. We're just like, hey, this is your space and I want you to enjoy it and I want to make it what you need it to be to thrive. And in doing that, um, we all know what it's like to wake up every day and not want to do something. A lot of, I mean, majority Mm -hmm. of our, our world has experienced it. 
or wake up every day and just not feel safe or not be comfortable, but just go through the motions because they're routine. And what happens is, is we just go through a routine. It's like, there's nothing exhilarating about it. It's just, we, we have to get through each day. And so it's just like, well, what if we can utilize the basics of fitness, right? Where it's just like, all right, Julie, if you were, you know, a young kid with low self-esteem, and then you started getting stronger, what does that do for your self-esteem? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we teach you how to utilize these tools that you're learning through fitness into school and then into your job or into like, you know, your entrepreneurship or mm-hmm. just into a relationship. You start to build these things and find these things, but you're always in a space and environment that you're thriving in. And so you start to learn, like, if I thrive and I can do this well and unlock my potential in this space, you know what? I may not want to be at school because I get bullied at school and that's not the space that I'm going to thrive in. Maybe I need to be homeschooled. Maybe I need to talk to my parents about that. Or maybe I need to switch schools. Or maybe I need to stay away from these type of people that are creating this environment for me um, that I don't really want to be in. And we coach these kids on all of these elements and all of these things so that they can find a way to thrive. But the idea of anything um, is that if a child is having fun, they will learn faster. Mm-hmm. And they will be fearless about the things that they're learning to just go out and achieve and do things. And so it's like change your body physically to where you're capable, right? When we talk about from sickness to wellness to fitness, mm-hmm. get you as fit as possible. You're fit, you're as fit as possible, or you feel comfortable in your skin and your body builds confidence. And then it allows you to explore the world in different ways um, and have fun. And so we're using fitness as kind of like the vehicle that it should be used as. Um, But we're just doing it with kids. And as long as they're having fun and enjoying it, they start to learn faster. When kids go to school, it's not that they can't learn the information. It's that the teacher sucks probably. It's like the environment puts them at a deficit because they don't want to be there. Um, But that kid is smart. Mm -hmm. And there's something in that kid that you just have to find a way to unlock. And if you invest the time, that's all, it, that's all it takes is just investing the time. You will figure that out and you will see how that kid thrives, where they thrive most. And then you'll be able to create an environment that allows for that to happen. Um, and so that's just kind of like my ideology on like Project Onyx, where it's just mm-hmm. like, I just need to create an environment where you feel safe. You feel completely safe. No one can harm you, touch you. You can speak as freely as you want to. You can say everything you feel. If you cry, which is maybe frowned upon, whether you're man or woman, right? If you're female Mm -hmm. and you cry, people may be like, oh, you're soft or you're weak or you're a baby. If you're male, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're soft or whatever. But if you cry and then everyone else is crying or everyone else is like, hey, we got you. It allows you to feel safe to be able to release that. Because through releasing that, you're going to gain strength in different ways. Whatever it is, it's just like safe space, positive environment. We're going to figure out what that kid's good at. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure out the true potential of that child. Or we're going to unlock some things that is going to allow that child to then figure out who they are and what they want to do and be successful at it. And so it's just it's just the basics. Um, And no matter what, it's the basics of being a good person. Like if Mm -hmm. you're a good person, you're going to create a safe space for people. And, um, and you're gonna, you know, keep, keep, make sure it's positive, you know, with the people. And it's just the the basics of what we need to do, but for children and for kids and teenagers and young adults, it's like, we need to make sure that this is in the forefront of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's super powerful. And, and like you said, it doesn't take, it just takes paying a little, probably for a lot of situations to just paying attention to who's there and who you can serve and who you can help to create that safe space for. Um, I know it's something that, you know, we've seen for sure. And the young boy, Will, who my significant other Lincoln has really taken under his wing. And he went from, you know, not knowing any English and feeling like no one wanted to talk to him at school. And now since he's been, he's had this just love and care and been part of the CrossFit affiliate. He's now he's strong. And all the other kids are asking him like, well, what should I do to work out? And how do I lift weights? And he's the, he's the one everyone's going to, to ask questions about 
protein and, and all this stuff. And it, it's really opened a lot of doors for him. So, um, so I, I just think it's beautiful what you're doing with project Onyx. And I think, um, I would also love to just ask, are there ways that other people can get involved? I know you're really focused in your gym on the youth in your community, but are there ways that other people can get involved, um, from around the country, around the world? Yeah. So, I mean, um, taking donations where people can make donations on the website just to support the mission. Um, and, uh, hopefully in the future we'll have chapters where we can create chapters and allow people to learn what we're doing, how we're doing it, and then facilitate those same things and do those same things in their cities or their areas. Um, and, um, just, yeah, just like sharing posts, you know, passing mm -hmm. the word, spreading the word on social media. Um, other than that, man, like, if we got any psychologists out there, adolescent psychology, um, anyone in certain fields, I mean, the whole idea is like, give a kid exposure to as many things as possible and let them figure out what they enjoy or what they like or what makes them feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same thing like that in business and entrepreneurship. It's like, what do you like to do? What are you good at? And then how do you monetize it? And there's some people that are just good when it comes to functioning and talking to other people. Some people that are good when it comes to working with their hands and doing physical tasks and labor. And it's just like, okay, if that's what you're good at, let me find a mechanic so that you can work with him and they can mentor you and we can mm -hmm. set this up. Let me find someone who is a CrossFit Games athlete that can guide you in this way and help you get to the games because that's what you're passionate about. Let me find someone who owns their own business and has made a, a Fortune 500 company out of some little small rinky-dink business um, because that's where your mind is going. Um, and it's just putting them in touch with those connections. And so um, doing podcasts, you know, meeting people is a great way to just network so that when people hear about what we're doing, they're just like, man, I want to be a part of that. I want to help. Mm -hmm. And how do I help? Um, so, yeah, just those are just some ways that people can connect and uh, support us. That's awesome. So if anybody's listening and has ideas for how they can support, feel free. Um, we'll make sure that you we have ways for you to contact um, easy. It will just circle up on those at the end. Um, I know you've got to run because we're running over time here. Um, but I like to finish with three questions. So if you can rapid fire, um, if you have time to rapid fire these. The first one is, what are the three things that you do on a regular basis that have the biggest positive impact on your health? Um, <laughs> uh, um, ad adult things. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, work out. And... Pray. Mm, I love that. I love mm. that. What is one thing that you think would have a big impact on your health, but you have a hard time implementing it or something you're working on? Uh, nutrition. Mm. Eating eating well. Or let me not say well. I eat well because my wife cooks. Mm -hmm. But stay consistently eating well. Yeah. And then what does a healthy life look like to you? A healthy life looks like positivity and play. Mm. I think that would be it. Just positivity and play. I love that. That's perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, I feel like there are so many other things, just different directions I'd love to go and, and ask you about. So maybe we'll do a part two sometime. But um, this has been really, really great. And I just want to say how much I appreciate the advocate that you've been. I know that, you know, in the CrossFit Games and in CrossFit in general, you know, we're a predominantly white sport. And as one of the few Black athletes who's been really successful and has this platform, I'm I'm just love seeing how you're using it and, you know, helping not only the youth, but just being that, um, that voice and, and doing so much. So I really, I really appreciate that and, um, love seeing you do your thing. Thank you, man. I, thank you for having me on. It was, it was good seeing you at the games. Cause I know we've never really got to, uh, time together. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah. But, um, it was good to see you at the games and his name is Will, right? Will. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it was good to good to meet him also. And um I'm glad that you've I'm glad that you stepped into that role. I don't know your background and you know how you were raised or where you're from, but um I know that is going to be really, really meaningful in his life. Oh, yeah. Well, it's already been extremely meaningful in my life. So I'm really grateful that I've been able to step into that role too. Um, and we'll have to get him out to train with you guys at some point soon and be part of that great positive environment. For um, sure. When we can, we'll uh, we'll make a trip to Kentucky. We'll make a trip down there. That'd be awesome. All right. Where can people find you if they want to reach out, they want to help out, get involved? Yeah, my Instagram is Elijah Easy Muhammad. Um, my nonprofit is Project Onyx DSM. Um, you can reach me at easymuhammad.com is my website um, where we do all of our bookings for seminars, online training, everything like that. Um, and then projectonyxdsm.com is my nonprofit's website that you can go in there, buy merch, uh, make donations, or just email us if you have any uh, questions or concerns about anything. Awesome. Well, thank you. And we didn't even get to talk about the seminars, but definitely look those up and see if it's something you want to do. So sure. All right. Thank you, Easy. Hope you have a great day. Yes, you too. Thank you. See ya. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, please consider subscribing and giving it a five-star rating on iTunes. It really does help to get the word out to more people.